Good afternoon to everybody. Um, we'd like to thank David Fried, um, who is sponsoring the Fight to Love for uh, this week. Uh, David, thank you very much for opening the new series on uh, Fashat Barashit. And um, it's a unique uh, sponsorship uh, because uh, he's giving it for um, gratitude to Hashem for all his lovely grandchildren, Ken Yirbu, uh, for Mary Shimon, for Edia, for Noam, for Ariel, Yonatan, Talia, Rafael, and uh, David. And Nakhlish Baruch should give you uh, more and more, Ken Yirbu. And you should have not only uh, many children, many grandchildren, but uh, great grandchildren, and also you should have a lot of Yiddish and uh, from them and from all your family. Um, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to start off a new series. At least uh, many times I've started off a series and it hasn't exactly worked. But uh, there's so much on the Pasha da Shavua, so many sites, so many alonim on Shabbat. Um, so I wanted to try something uh, in a way that maybe you old, but um, to speak about Tolei Yisrael um, every single week um, to choose um, someone who it's his yacht site in that week, and there's so many Tolei who passed away during a, a certain week, and um, to relate either some of their teachings or some of their words uh, to the parasha. So it's like a history. On the one hand, it's the yacht site um, of the Dolim on the other uh, as well, and also to try to connect it to the parasha. So um, the first person that I've uh, chosen is uh, someone who's relatively, uh, um, we're speaking about who passed away 150 years ago. Um, his name was Rabbi Yaw Kutmacher and uh, we'll learn about his life in a couple of minutes and just say what was like uh, unique about him of all the Dolim and to relate it to uh, the Pasha Tashavua. So first of all, um, Rabbi Yaw Gutmacher was born in 1796 and passed away in 1874 and um, he is uh, <coughs> one of the great medium of uh, Rabbi Akiva Ega. And he was also known as um, Rabbi Liyaw Kutmacher Begradich, or from Kretz, in other words, from uh, what today is known as um, Austria. Um, what was what was he known for? I mean, he was uh, he was um, an exceptional uh, Tamid Chacham, a person who was a Posaic, a person who was a Kabbalist, but um, he was he was also known to be a, uh, someone who. Um, said the following, uh, like, he's known for the following, like, three things, uh, like, chiefly. The one thing is that um, the, what is the slogan of the Mizrahi, or became the slogan of the Mizrahi, which is Eretz Yisrael, Am Yisrael, or Torah Yisrael, the land of Israel for the Jewish people on the basis of the Torah Yisrael, that actually was all based on him, because what he emphasized was that um, that it was like a, a, a triad. Um, it's the Jewish people, the Torah, and Am Yisrael. But all these three come together specifically in Eretz Yisrael. So that's one thing that he emphasized on the basis of the Kabbalah. And the second thing that he um, he was known for, and here he he had like another colleague. They both learned in the yeshiva of the very famous famous Rabbi Kiva Ega. And um, uh, his name was Ratzvi Kalisha. Everyone uh, knows him that he was, he wrote in 1862, he wrote the famous book called uh, Trishat Zion. So uh, Rav Kalisha and uh, Rav Eliyahu Gutmacher, they preceded um, Herzl in that they were the first ones to speak about not only going to Eretz Yisrael, um, like Stam to go into HSL, but to organize it in a way in which um, to to become that it should be like a like a, a country, like a Medina. You know, it's until now people were urged to go to HSL, but as individuals, but they formally uh, spoke about like establishing a state in uh, in HSL. I mean, Herzl afterwards organized it better. But the idea and the first publication of it was from Rav Kalisha and also from um, Rav Eliyahu Kutmacher, who was like 
on these two brilliant students of, uh, amongst others, of the famous Yeshiva Rabbi Akiva Ega. So, um, this, as I said, just to, to get the context, he passed away 1874. So, um, already then there was, uh, he and Akalisha started off the upper movements of, um, or gave an impetus to the movement to return to uh, Zion. Now, this Rav Gutmacher, he also is famous for having said, that he is sure that if there would be 130 farmers who would go back to Ejisa and they'd start farming the land, that would be the beginning of Atchalta de Gugla, the beginning of the redemption of the Jewish people. And um, where did he get 130? 30. Some people conjecture there's Tamit uh, Chacham, one of the Roshay Yeshivot in Mali Adumim, Rabbi Yitzchak Shilat, that he conjectures that um, you've got over here the 13 tribes, because whether your safe is divided up into Ephraim and Nashe, so you've got a minion of the 13 tribes that's like a minimum in order for it to be considered to be um, like a certain level of Gaula. So I mean, must always remember that there are various levels of Gaula. So like a, or, and something that represents the Jewish people. I mean, a 10 is a basic, basically a minyan. Then you've got over here, al uh, Sheikh Nesad al 120, that was 12 times 10. That's what Rabbi Herzog said. He said 130, like 13 tribes times 10. That's the minimum. Then we've got another uh, 22,000 that Mara says is another form of um, a potent, Representative to a representation of the Jewish people. Then we've got 600,000, right, which is also like a minimum for a certain level of sanctity. But this is what he spoke about this concept of Atchalta Gaula. And what he was so also known for was, besides this very, very like, great statement, that connects, sorry, that connects to what we start off in the parasha, the first we start off, Rashi Paralokimeta Shemai Vata Aretz. Rashi said, why does it start off? His first comment, why does it start off by describing something we don't really know? We can't really fathom like, the, the mechanism of how the cosmos was created. But Rashi says that there's a moral lesson that everybody knows this Rashi, that a time will come where the nations of the world, and as Lubavitch Rebbe said, not it's very interesting, all the nations, not only the people of Canaan, all the nations will rise up against Israel when they return to Israel and they'll say that you bandits, that you are robbers because you you stole Eretz Israel, to which the, uh, the that's why the Torah starts off by saying that Hashem is the creator of the entire world, and He designated Eretz Israel to the Jewish people. So that was the connection that I found a lot with this very very famous person, Rav Macha. and he, as I say, I repeat that um, he was like the first. He and the Gra a little bit beforehand, and Rav Tzvi Kalisha, they both said. That, and they both wrote extensively of the fact that we we cannot just live in the Galut and then expect that one day Mashiach will come and will bring the people to Israel, but we have to make a concentrated effort by ourselves to come and to bring about the Gula. And when, that's what he said, that when there will be 130 people um, who come and work the land, even though, he says, even though they won't be 100% deserving, that's maybe a hint at afterwards the, the Chalutzim, who they were, or who they became, nevertheless, when Hashem sees this um, this initiative started off by the Jewish people, He will bless their He will bless their works. So um, yeah, that was like His great great chidush. Uh, he was an exceptional um, like holy man. What was one of the unique things about Rabbi Yal Gutmacher was that um, his, his besides his brilliance, his absolute piety, and he became somewhat of a rebbe. In 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 Gretz, which was like uh, which is Austria. Now that was very very uh, like strange because that just wasn't the the, the idea of like a rebbe, um, a rebbe type of figure uh, was something which was so strange to the character of a German like sort of well, Austrian, uh, Prussian type of uh, jury. It just wasn't there. And but people he used to, he was known as a Mekubal, and people would throng to his city to come and to get brochas from him. And they Mamash besieged him. Thousands of people would come to get brochas from him. Such a pious person. And he um 
at, he couldn't take it anymore. He was like besieged by all these people. So what he did was he, he, he resorted to, um, to writing in the newspaper, getting someone to publish that he's got actually no magical powers. There's nothing special about him. Please don't come and bother him with uh, coming to get Brachot. But it didn't help. In the end, what he had to do is he had to go to the governor, the local governor, and he had to tell him, right, to please um, like ensure his privacy and get the people not to come and to stand outside his house and wait for Midras to get Brachot. But that didn't really work because apparently the governor understood that, uh, yeah, you had all these pilgrimage coming now to Gretsch. And uh, it was like a very good like profit for 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 the for the city. So like half heartedly he tried to uh, stop it, but it didn't really he didn't really like uh, make too much effort because it was like very lucrative for um, for the city's uh, coffers. So that's why uh, he didn't make too much of it. In in one of the uh, also interesting stories which is recorded in the Chidushim of Rabbi Kiva Ega on Rabbi Eliyahu Gutmacher that once he was um, he was dancing on a, on a Simchat Torah and he was like in a trance. The language that the, that is used in Hebrew is he was he was dancing Kamobe Ibut Choshim. In other words, that Ibut Choshim, he lost all his senses. And everyone was just like stunned by the sight. The Saudi man dancing in like in, like in a trance. Uh, with the Torah, to which Rav Akiva Ega said, I'm not surprised at all, because it's not that he was dancing with the Torah, the Torah was dancing with him. So uh, that is the personality of the week, the famous and saintly Rav Liel Gutmacher, who now in Pashat Rashid, when we read about Hashem creating the world and giving us Eretz Yisrael, that he was the one who said, yes, Hashem is giving us Eretz Yisrael, that we, already in his times, he said, we have to go and make an effort, and then Hashem will bring about Mashiach. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi